The MGH Swallow Screening Tool, or MGH-SST, is a validated screening designed to easily identify patients who may have difficulty swallowing and are at risk for aspiration. The MGH-SST is to be completed before the patient is given anything to eat or drink, including oral medications, to determine if they are safe to start eating. If your patient fails, they are at risk for aspiration. They should be kept NPO, including medications, and a swallow evaluation by the speech-language pathologist should be triggered. Let us start with some background information. After completion of this tutorial, we hope you will be able to understand the basic mechanics of swallowing and aspiration, explain the importance of a swallow screening before giving food, liquids, and medications orally, Differentiate between a swallow screening and a comprehensive swallow evaluation. Determine basic readiness of the patient to participate. Identify the five features of swallowing to be assessed during Part 2 of the MGH-SST. Determine the appropriate process based on a pass or fail result. Document your results in the medical chart. Aspiration occurs when food, liquid, saliva, or vomitus enters the airway, and in some patients can cause a pulmonary infection known as aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia can be deadly to our patients. In 2003, the CDC reported that 20 to 33 percent of patients with hospital-associated pneumonia die. Acute stroke patients have three times greater risk of dying if they acquire a pneumonia while in hospital. Here at MGH, patients who acquire an aspiration pneumonia have hospital stays that are 13 days longer on average than those who do not. You can help prevent it with early identification of aspiration risk and proper management. Patients with difficulty swallowing, known as dysphagia, are at increased risk for acquiring an aspiration pneumonia. Other factors that may increase the risk of acquiring pneumonia include poor airway protection, depressed consciousness, tube feeding, dependence on others for feeding, and multiple medical diagnoses resulting in deconditioning and or bedbound status. Let's explore some of the common myths that have been perpetuated over the years regarding swallowing. How many times have we all heard or said some of these? My patient can't eat, he doesn't have a gag. My patient didn't cough, so I know she didn't aspirate. All patients with dysphagia should put their chin down to eat. My patient is NPO, but he can take meds and applesauce. During this presentation, we hope to be able to provide you with an increased knowledge of swallowing and aspiration and an understanding of why these myths are false. The normal swallowing mechanism involves rapid and complex coordination of more than five cranial nerves and 30 pairs of muscles in the oral cavity, pharynx, larynx, and the esophagus. Both sensory input, such as taste and temperature, and motor input, such as moving the food around in our mouth with the tongue, are necessary. Timing is everything in swallowing. There are three stages in swallowing. The oral stage involves the lips, tongue, cheeks, and jaw. During this stage, we move the food or liquid in our mouth, chew it, and form a cohesive bolus ready for swallowing. The bolus is then propelled to the back of our mouth, and the second stage, the pharyngeal stage, is initiated. The most important function of the pharyngeal stage is to close the airway and propel the food through the pharynx into the esophagus. The esophageal stage involves contractions of the esophagus to propel the bolus into the stomach. You can see how fast the barium travels during a normal swallow in this clip from a video fluoroscopic swallow study. It typically only takes one to two seconds for the food or liquid to go from your lips to your esophagus. Let's now talk about dysphagia. Dysphagia is a difficulty or inability to swallow. It can include coughing or choking when eating or drinking, difficulty chewing food or moving it around the mouth, sensing that food is sticking in the throat or chest area, or experiencing reflux or regurgitation. 
Patients with dysphagia are at increased risk of aspiration, as well as dehydration and malnutrition. There are many signs that warn us of potential dysphagia in our patients. These include slurred speech, weakness in the face or lips, an impaired voice or cough, trouble breathing, difficulty managing secretions or drooling, inability to stay awake during a meal, inability to sip from a straw or remove food from the utensil, or food remaining in the mouth after swallowing. Not all patients cough when they aspirate. Up to 40% of patients aspirate silently, and thus the care provider does not necessarily know that aspiration has occurred. There are many reasons why someone can experience dysphagia, and sometimes it can be multifactorial. Many neurogenic diseases can result in dysphagia. Acute stroke is a common cause. Many medical etiologies also result in dysphagia. In the hospital, we often see patients who experience dysphagia due to the presence of a tracheostomy tube or after a prolonged intubation. Structural lesions such as an esophageal stricture or a tumor can block the passage of food or liquid. GI motility disorders can result in reflux. Swallowing difficulty can result following surgery, radiation or chemotherapy, or can be a side effect of a medication. And lastly, there are some conditions of a psychogenic nature. The nurse plays a critical role in caring for the patient with dysphagia. The nurse is charged with screening the patient for ability to take oral medications, food or liquid before any of these can be given. The nurse obtains appropriate diet orders for those patients who pass the screening and should not feed those who don't, even if a diet is ordered. Once the diet is initiated, the nurse frequently checks to see that the patient is swallowing safely at meals and ensures that safe feeding practice is followed for adequate nutrition and hydration. The nurse is also essential in educating the patient and family about aspiration risk and appropriate diet. Thorough and frequent oral hygiene is also a critical component of nursing practice. A clean mouth can actually reduce the risk of pneumonia even if a patient aspirates. This is because aspiration of bacteria colonized in the mouth is the most common means of acquiring a pulmonary infection. Maintaining a clean mouth can be challenging because there are many barriers to oral care. Oral care can be difficult to complete in an intubated patient, and the patient may not be able to cooperate. In our busy schedules, oral care may be overlooked as something done only for patient comfort rather than as an essential component of patient care. Also, not all products used are optimal. We know these pictures may not be pretty, but these are just some examples of what may happen in a patient who has not received ongoing oral care. Imagine the bacteria that invade the lungs if these patients aspirate. Here at the MGH, we have detailed guidelines about oral care. Please see the references at the end of this presentation for the link. The guidelines stipulate that oral care will be done every two to four hours using a soft toothbrush moistened with Paradex. Foam swabs are not effective in cleaning the mouth. Thoroughly clean the lips, tongue, teeth, gums, and roof of the mouth. Use a flashlight to best see into the back of the mouth. In the next section of the training, we'll be reviewing the MGH SST, including the materials needed, its administration, and scoring. First, we'd like to distinguish between a swallow screening and a comprehensive swallow evaluation by a speech-language pathologist. A swallow screening quickly identifies patients at risk for aspiration and thus should not be fed, but it is not a full evaluation and it does not help us to understand why the patient cannot swallow or why they may be aspirating. Therefore, decisions about safe diet consistencies and strategies such as head positioning cannot be determined based on a screening. This can only be accomplished through a comprehensive swallow evaluation. A speech-language pathologist completes a comprehensive swallow evaluation to examine the structures and function of the swallowing mechanism. This evaluation determines the etiology behind the swallowing problem, and the results generate an individualized treatment plan. If indicated, an instrumental evaluation may need to be completed, such as a video fluoroscopic swallow study or endoscopic evaluation of swallowing. The 
MGH SST has been designed as a two-tiered approach. Part 1 looks at the basic readiness of the patient to participate. In Part 2 we look at the presence of five features of swallowing. The entire process takes less than five minutes to administer and score. The swallow screening must be completed by a staff member trained in the administration of the MGH SST. It must be completed within 24 hours of admission and prior to a patient taking anything orally, including medications. The swallow screening need not be completed on patients who are admitted for lower spine surgery, methotrexate administration, or seizure monitoring. Furthermore, patients with tracheostomies are too high risk, so should be deferred and should receive a comprehensive swallow evaluation by the SLP before feeding. Be cautious post-extubation, as screening should not be completed less than four hours after a patient is extubated. Before you begin the screening, gather the following six items at the bedside to ensure a smooth and quick completion. You will need the MGH SST sticker, a flashlight, a long cotton tip swab, a tongue depressor, a cup of water, a teaspoon, and rubber gloves. In Part 1, we assess the patient's readiness to participate in the swallow screening. We will walk you through the steps over the next several slides. First, can your patient remain awake? In order for patients to take safe and adequate oral nutrition, they need to be awake for the duration of a meal. For our screening purposes, the patient must demonstrate wakefulness for a minimum of five minutes. If he cannot, he fails Part 1 and Part 2 is deferred. He will need to remain NPO and be re-screened when he is able to maintain an adequate level of alertness. This may be later in the day or in several days. Can your patient tolerate having the head of bed elevated to at least 30 degrees? If not, airway closure may be compromised. Ideally, a fully upright position is recommended, but if the head of the bed cannot be raised to at least 30 degrees, she fails part one of the screening and she will need to be re-screened when the head of the bed can be elevated. Is your patient's breathing comfortable and regular? Can he maintain reasonable oxygen saturation on room air or with supplemental oxygen via nasal cannula? Aspiration risk is increased if the patient is working hard to breathe. The swallow screening should not be completed on a patient on a face mask, non-rebreather mask, or with an unusually high respiratory rate. Patients with unstable breathing fail part one of the screening, part two is deferred, and they will need to be re-screened when their breathing has improved. Is your patient's mouth clean? It is imperative that the oral cavity be clean prior to presentation of any POs. Use a flashlight when assessing oral hygiene so that you can clearly view the back of the tongue and the entire roof of the mouth to the back of the throat. If any of the items in Part 1 are failed, stop. Maintain NPO. Fill out the sticker indicating which items in Part 1 were impaired and include the patient's name, date and time of screening. Sign the form and notify the medical team. Determine an alternate route for nutrition, hydration and medication. If your patient is awake, able to sit up, breathing comfortably and has a clean mouth, proceed to part two. In part two, you will examine five clinical features to assist in determining if your patient is safe to start an oral diet and to take meds orally. First, look at how your patient moves her tongue. Full range and strength of movement are critical for manipulating the liquid and for chewing food. Ask your patient to stick out your tongue beyond your lips and lick all the way around your lips. She scores a point if she can lick her lips all the way around her mouth to both sides. You can also show her what to do if she cannot understand your directions. The following video clips demonstrate normal and impaired tongue movement. Although a bit shaky and slow, this patient still receives the point as he can fully extend the tongue and completely lick around the lips. And I'm going to ask you to do that once more. Stick your tongue out and lick all the way around your lips. Here is an example of a patient with abnormal tongue movement. She cannot fully protrude her tongue nor reach the sides. She fails this item. 
Look all the way around your mouth. <laughs> See how this patient can only stick his tongue out to the left side? He fails this item. Next, assess your patient's ability to cough. A strong cough is essential for protecting and clearing the airway should your patient aspirate. Ask your patient to cough as hard as you can. Listen for sharp, hard contact of vocal folds. If you hear a weak or breathy cough, or if there is an absent cough, he fails this item and he does not receive a point. You may need to demonstrate a cough if he doesn't understand. The following video clips provide examples of impaired cough. Listen to how weak and breathy her cough is. She fails this item. And can you cough? <coughs> when asked to cough, this patient can only grunt, so he fails this item. <coughs> You also want to test your patient's voice, determining her ability to protect her airway and sensation in the larynx should aspiration occur. To test vocal quality, ask your patient to say, ha, 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 ha. This can be tricky, so you should listen carefully. If your patient's voice sounds loud, clear, and dry, she passes this item and scores a point. Presence of a hoarse, breathy, raspy, or wet, gurgly voice is concerning and results in a fail for this item. The following video clips demonstrate examples of impaired voice. This patient's voice is hoarse and raspy. He fails this item. Say, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. This patient has almost no voice. She fails this item. The patient has a voice that is very breathy and almost without phonation. She too fails this item. And once more say, ha, ha, ha. <gasps> Next you need to know if your patient can sense when his pharynx is being touched. If pharyngeal sensation is reduced, your patient is more likely to aspirate because he cannot sense when food or liquid is in his throat. Notice, you are not necessarily assessing a gag reflex, as the gag is not a reliable indicator of swallowing ability. See the next slide for a diagram of the proper method. To assess pharyngeal sensation, have your patient close his eyes and open his mouth. Using a long cotton-tipped applicator, reach all the way into the back of the mouth and gently stroke the wall of the pharynx on one side. If needed, use a tongue depressor to hold the tongue down. Ask him to indicate if he feels the swab by raising his hand on the side that was touched. Repeat this process on the other side of the pharynx. If your patient gags before you reach the pharyngeal wall, you may stop there, as he has successfully demonstrated good sensation and he passes this item. If he doesn't have a gag reflex, but can indicate that he felt you stroking the pharyngeal wall, he still receives this point. You will now proceed to testing your patient's ability to drink water. Please proceed cautiously if she has failed the previous elements of the screening, as she may be at high risk for aspiration. Coughing when drinking water is the highest predictor of aspiration. First, provide your patient with three single teaspoons of water. After each teaspoonful, listen for the presence of a cough or throat clearing, a change in the voice, shortness of breath, or change in breathing pattern. Any of these may indicate aspiration. You should stop if they occur and fail the screening. If there are no signs of aspiration with the single teaspoon presentations of water, give half a cup of water to your patient and ask her to drink all of the water. The water does not need to be drunk in all one gulp. Again, listen for the presence of a cough or throat clearing, a change in the voice, shortness of breath, or change in breathing pattern that may indicate aspiration. If present, your patient fails and receives zero points for this item and thus fails the entire screening. 
If none of the above signs are present, he receives two points for this item. The following video clip demonstrates a patient drinking water. This patient can drink water from the spoon, but notice that she coughs when challenged by sips of water from the cup. She fails this item and thus fails the screening. Please remember that even if the cough is delayed, the patient fails the item. And say, ah. Uh. Okay, again. You say, ah. Uh. Okay. Once more. Say, ah. Uh. Good. Drink half a cup. If your patient scores a 5 or a 6 on Part 2, she passes the screening. A diet order should be obtained. Thin liquids and food consistency is appropriate to dentition. The first meal should be observed to ensure safety. Remember, your patient's status can fluctuate or deteriorate, which can affect swallowing safety, so ongoing observation is critical even if your patient passes the screening. If she scores a 4 or less, or if you have clinical concerns, she fails the screening. She should be kept NPO, including oral medications, and speech-language pathology needs to be consulted to complete a comprehensive swallow evaluation. Non-oral means of nutrition, hydration, and medication needs to be determined, and a dietitian should be consulted for a nutrition assessment. The final step in the swallow screening process is documentation. Fill out the sticker completely. Make sure to place check marks in the boxes to indicate items that have been passed or failed. Add up the score for the five clinical features and write the score in the box marked Final Score. Then, indicate at the bottom whether your patient has passed or failed the screening based on the score. A score of 5 or 6 is needed to pass the MGH SST. If your patient passes the screening based on the clinical items, but you remain concerned about aspiration, mark the screening as a fail. Keep the patient NPO and obtain a swallow evaluation by the SLP. Remember to sign the form and place it in the medical record. Notify the medical team of the results. This is a short video clip to demonstrate a full swallow screening. See how quickly it can be completed. I'm asking you to do a few things so that I can check to see if it's safe to, for you to start eating and drinking. Okay. Um, first, I need to see that you're awake and that you're sitting comfortably and breathing and that you're upright. And I'd like to take a look in your mouth and make sure it's clean before I begin. So can you open up for me? Okay, good. Looks good. And if I if it wasn't clean, I would go ahead and clean it before I proceed. All those items are present so I can go on to part two. Can you stick out your tongue and lick all around your lips for me? And lick around your lips? Tops and bottoms? Great. Okay. Can you cough as hard as you can? <coughs> good. Okay. I'm listening to see that your cough is strong and sharp and that your vocal folds are closing. Now I want to hear you say ha 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 loud and clearly. Ha ha ha. Great. Now I'm going to gently touch the um, back of your throat on each side with a swab and what I'd like you to do is when you feel it on the side raise your hand to show me which side you feel it on, okay? Okay. Okay, which side was it on? Good job, all right. Can I go again? And which side was it on? Can you feel it? This side. Great, okay, excellent. Okay. Now I'm gonna give you some water to drink. First I'll give you some teaspoons, and we'll do it three times to see how you do with a sip of water. Okay. Okay. All right. 
and we just want to make sure Nope, just take it like you normally would. Can you say ah? Uh? Ah. Uh. All right. Say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Can you say ah uh again? Ah. Uh. Great. You were able to swallow the teaspoons okay without any problems and uh, without any difficulty so I'm going to give you the cup of water and see if you could drink some of the water for me. Okay. Great. And can you say ah uh, again? Ah. Uh. Great. All right. You did fine. You passed the swallow screening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill out this sticker, which has all the steps on it, and I'm going to place it in your chart so that everyone else will also realize that you have passed the swallow screen, and we'll let the team know so we can get a diet order for you. Okay. 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 All right. And we'll request a, re a regular diet for you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Medications will need to be given by a non-oral route if your patient fails the screening. The options listed may be available and should be discussed with the patient's medical team for appropriate medication orders. Thank you for taking the time to complete this training. Please fill out the post-training test and print out the certificate at the end of this presentation. It should be signed by your clinical nurse specialist. Lastly, three additional slides follow. They provide links to information that you may find helpful as you begin to administer the MGH-SST.